Hello, Glenn Peloso. How are you today? I'm excellent. How are you? We're sitting here in your beautiful home. Thank you. And we're very happy to be here because you've signed on to do some design dilemmas for us on HGTV.ca. Yes, I'm, I'm here to help as much as I can possibly help. That's very exciting. So <clears throat> let's get a bit of a feel for your design style. Just tell us what your aesthetic sense is all about. You know, a lot of the way that I have run my company is to spend a lot of time with the people that we're working with so that I understand what issues they have. Because I think that sometimes people, you know, I'm a fairly neat guy, so I'm okay to have, you know, I have one child, and I'm okay to have white furniture and black, and they're harder to maintain for me. If you're a single mom, and you've got three kids, and you've got a full-time job, and you're trying to struggle to make those things happen, sometimes making choices that are, for the moment, really beautiful, but for the long term, they actually end up making you really unhappy, because you have to spend so much time that time trying to care for them mm. and not enough time just enjoying them. So I go, these are not great choices for you. The better choice for you would be something that is, you know, more mottled, is, has, has more depth of color, is dealt with in a way that isn't going to be so difficult for you to maintain. Um, I think generally I like things to be simple in terms of the hard surfaces, a little bit more complex, and I'm, and I'm definitely not a, a, a lots of detail kind of guy. It, 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 it drives me crazy. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, as as you have here in yeah. your lovely home, a lot of people have gotten on, on the train of open concept and now are having difficulty dividing and demarcating the different spaces. Yeah. How, how did you do it here and what do you suggest is one of the first steps for people to tackle? Divide the space up with implied walls. So here, you know, for instance, the carpet very clearly says this is a zone and this zone ends and moves into, you know, a zone that is, that is part of the kitchen has sort of a, you know, so every area is delineated by the furnishings, the way that, you know, I've implied a hallway behind us just by having the back of the sofa be an implied wall. You can see over it, but clearly it's a hallway. And so all of the things that, that the house had when you had walls up still happen. You still have hallways and you still have rooms. The way that they're delineated is by virtue of either uh, color, carpet, furnishings, using the backs of things. Uh, you can sometimes use screens. You can use sliding doors if you want to, you know, you have a, an open concept condo and you want to be able to create a room that's going to be for, um, you know, a guest to come over. You want to be able to close that space off. You can do that with sliding doors. I've noticed that you've painted the entire space the same color. Sometimes people really kind of want to paint the kitchen one color and their living or hallway another color, even though it's an open space. Yeah. What do you suggest? Do you think that people should stick to one color as a rule of thumb? I wouldn't say that there is a, a rule that says you must do this or you must do that. It's really what you prefer. And what happens visually when, when you take two colors and you put them together, the very first place my eye goes is that demarcation. So if you think of it, um, even if you think of it like skin and lipstick, the, the, where I'm going to look first is, is where the lipstick line ends and your skin begins. And then I'll see that your lips are red or blue. No, they look fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Um, and the, but really the same is true if you're, you know, if you're painting a house. Where you make that line is where my eye goes to first because something is changing. Sometimes taking away the details of, of this room is this color and this room is this color creates a more a slightly more peaceful feel. It also depends on how big the space is. Mm -hmm. If you have a really, really, really big space, having, you know, now we're, we're talking about color blocking, mm -hmm. but your kitchen can be color blocked into one color, the living space into another color, and it can work really well. It sort of depends on how big the space is. You did go with quite a, re a relatively bold gray on the walls, and mm -hmm. color is always a very popular <laughs> subject. On, uh, on our site and yeah. people choosing color. What are some of the color trends that you would suggest? Well, at the moment, what has happened is that gray has become the new neutral. So mm -hmm. we've gone away from the idea of beige. You know, some people call it grayish, which is sort of the right. beige-gray combination. So that, that is really the neutral. It's a good neutral because it is sort of, you know, if you took every color in the color palette and put it in a little pot and stirred, you'd end up with something that was kind of a muddy gray. Mm -hmm. So it works with everything. There isn't a color that you can't put with it and still have it not have it work. Right now, we, we see lots of jewel tones. So mm -hmm. if, if you're, you know, for people who are sort of 
going, well, what are the trendy colors? If you just took, um, you know, a birthstone chart, that would be fairly, would be relatively accurate in terms of That's helping you decide where do I go in terms of colors. So purples and greens, as, as the summer comes along, you'll see more sort of blues like this, you'll see yellows, you'll see oranges, those kinds of things. Um, color trend is hugely influenced. I mean, there is a group that decides what the color trend is going to be. They forecast it for us, and that's how it works out that every clothing manufacturer and, and everybody... And are those designers or their Pantone people or...? Uh, it's a whole collection of people. It is, a, it is a collection of people, sometimes graphic designers, interior designers, architects. There are very specific colors that are sort of the trend colors. Mm -hmm. But if you sort of said, you know, the, our, our winter was about green and purple, our summer will be about blues and yellows and oranges, you'd probably be relatively safe. And that's the place, you know, in your house to have fun with accessories. Unless you, you love to paint right. and you love to do that stuff. Because I was going to say, if you're going to go color, you should probably be prepared for uh, an overhaul paint job in a couple of years. Exactly. Right. And that's, you know, for me, it's pretty, even in this space, the, the, the speed with which I could change this up would be incredible. If I just used really strong art, if these pillows weren't black but they were bright orange or bright yellow, it would still work in the overall palette. I could change the feel of the space really quickly without having to spend a lot of time, energy, or money. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see people make in decor? Uh, space planning, often, because you know what happens is people go to stores and it's a big, huge store with a 30-foot ceiling and 40,000 square feet of stuff. And you look at the sofa or the chair or the table or whatever, and you go, it's, yes, for sure it will fit. It's small. It's tiny. And it is tiny in that space. And then you get home and you go, it's enormous. We can't walk around it. It's too big. Um, you know, so I often say, don't buy, don't impulse buy that kind of stuff. Go find out what the dimensions are. Come home and tape it on the floor. If you just put a tape down it, then you'll know, particularly in open concept spaces, mm -hmm. you know, tape it out. See how much room there is for you to get from this side to that side, how much there is room to get around the piece at the back, how easy is it for you to access, you know, in order to just, you don't want to jump over the sofa, you want to be able to walk around it. Too much is a big problem. And, and it's what I sort of call reverse design. It's where you go out shopping, and then you find these things, and then you think... A lot of people are guilty of that. Yeah. How do I squeeze this into my house? Right. And in the end, it, you know, my grandfather used to say a thing that I loved. He used to say, you know, at a point, you stop owning things and things own you. And it's true, because I'm now... So guilty. <laughs> it's I'm okay. so guilty. <laughs> it's true.